former champion against former champion in this their trilogy fight. Bring on Lima versus Korskob three. Look at those records, 29 and seven, 21 and two. Incredible athletes. The reach difference of three inches could be the difference in this fight for Korskov. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA Live on the Zone now presents the much anticipated opening round of the welterweight World Grand Prix. Scheduled for five five minute rounds, we introduce the blue corner. At six foot one, weighing in 169.3 pounds, the former Bellator welterweight world champion brings 21 professional victories, just two defeats. Fighting out of Omsk, Russia, presenting Andre Spartan Korishkov. And across the cage, his adversary tonight fighting out of the red corner at six foot one, weighing in 170 pounds even. The two time former Bellator welterweight world champion stands with 29 professional victories, seven defeats. From Goiano, Goiás, Brazil, he fights out of Atlanta, Georgia, introducing darkness, the Fino Lima. In charge of the action, your referee, Josh Rosenthal. Good to have Josh Rosenthal back as a referee as we get set. I expect a clean fight, obey my commands all times, defend yourselves all times. Touch gloves if you want now, let's do this. Five, five minute rounds. Opening round of the Bellator MMA Welterweight Grand Prix. Douglas Lima. Andre Koreshkov. Gentlemen, you ready? You ready? Let's fight! The bell and the rubber match begins. The stakes are high here as the winner will advance to face the victor of the much anticipated grudge match between the UK's Paul Daly and MVP Michael Venom Page. But this is about now. Lima in the red gloves, Korshkov in the blue. And you know for Lima, the game plan is attack those legs with his ferocious kicks. He has got some of the hardest kicks in MMA. Oh, there right you go. That kick right there. And you can see Korshkov came out in a southpaw stance. Oh, spinning there you go. by Korshkov. That's the first spinning technique that's ever touched Douglas Lima from Korshkov. And you know Korshkov's trainer, Alexander Slamenko, known for his ostentatious spinning attack smile when that landed. Well, that's where, that's where Korshkov has learned that from. And it is interesting to see that Korshkov has come out here with this southpaw stance, but it does open up his body to an attack with the kicks by Douglas Lima. Inside low kick by Lima, minute gone in the opening round. Inside low kick by Korshkov, who switches back to orthodox stance, and here we go. Cavalcade of kicks in round one, and Korshkov shoots, but telegraphed it, and uh, Lima able to stuff it so far. He's able to stuff it so far, but you've got Korshkov wow. is strong. Able to get inside, he is on that leg. He's still in good position, he get a high crotch from here. Douglas Lima trying to open him up, get that head up a little bit higher, but he still can get him. If he gets his hips up inside, he can get him right off of his feet. In their first meeting, Koroskov smothering Lima with his, his wrestling. And the rematch. Nice balance by Douglas Lima. Lima able to counter in the third round with a left hook that set up the finish. And now here is the much anticipated rubber match. And both guys are going out there. When we looked at this fight, Morrow, we talked about, look at Douglas Lima has got to attack that lead leg. He's got to do things to make Korshkov open up. And Korshkov has got to get those takedowns and take Douglas Lima out of range of those kicks. That's their roots to victory. Korshkov frustrated by the mistakes he made in the loss to Lima showing those up in preparation for this third meeting between former Bellator MMA welterweight champions. Korshkov has won eight of his last nine with the loss coming to Lima. Lima stabs Korshkov with a knee to the midsection. Korshkov looking for the trip and Lima hanging on. Lima's got a good take. He's going to the double. He doesn't want to. He just decides, you know what, I'm going to clinch with you up against the fence. The one thing that we found out for a long time Andre Korshkov was a striker in Bellator. All of his strikes basically never used to take down. And then we learned when he fought Douglas Lima the first time, 
He has got outstanding wrestling technique, and it is hard to deal with because Douglas Lima is known as a guy that is super hard to take down. Only two losses in Korshkov's career have come against Lima and former Bellator champion Ben Askren. Korshkov holds a title defense over former UFC lightweight champion Benson Henderson here in Bellator. And uh, what do you make of the uh, the first round thus far, John? You know, it's honestly, it's exactly like I thought. When Korshkov could get inside, and could get that clinch and try for the wrestling. He needs to do that to get his victory today. And Douglas Lehman needs to land those leg kicks. Doug needs to get Korshkov off of him and off of the fence. It's okay if Doug goes for the takedown himself. And he doesn't want to be in this clinch position. Highly educated crowd in San Jose, raining down the booths. They know what these two are capable of, and they'd like to see a little more action. And it's always so surprising when you know people think they know Korishkov being this great striker. Korishkov knows that Douglas Lima has hurt him in the stand-up. And he knows he's a great striker, but he knows that he has an advantage in this fight if he puts Douglas Lima on the ground. Final minute of the first round. And Lima and Korishkov jockeying for position along the fence. Both guys trying, you know, Josh Rosenthal's trying to give them time here, trying to let them work it out. And you see the knees coming from Korishkov, and although you know a lot of people in the stands want more, those knees inside, those knees on your thighs, they add up over time and make it to where your movement is limited. Korishkov began training pancreation in Army combat fighting when he was just nine. Made his pro MMA debut in October of 2010, and changing levels, looking for the takedown against Lima as 15 seconds are left in the first round. There was a nice left hook landed by Korishkov in that little exchange. An uneventful opening round to the Bellator Welterweight Grand Prix. All right, gentlemen, fight! Bell and round number two. Korishkov's 15th Bellator welterweight bout, the most appearances in division history. Korishkov's 12 victories in Bellator welterweight competition, also the most in divisional history. When we talked to Douglas Lima, he said the game plan was going to be all about coming down to timing the brutal attacks of Korishkov. And for Lima, well, he hopes his time makes a metronome envy as he wants to find that opening. You can see Douglas is looking for it. The one thing I would suggest if I was in Douglas Lima's corner is when Korshkov goes to this southpaw position, not only attack that lead leg, I want you to throw hard kicks to the body. Hit that left arm. It's okay if you hit the arm. It's gonna slow it down and it makes it less effective. Lima went into their first fight with a leg injury. Not to make any excuses, the, uh, well, the head of Bellator MMA, Scott Coker. He is watching, of course, the Welterweight World Grand Prix in the race to 50 cents a million dollars. Yes, the rapper putting a million bucks in the pot for the winner of the Bellator MMA Welterweight Grand Prix. I wonder how Chael Sonnen and the rest of the Heavyweight Grand Prix crew feel about that. Chael's like, well, where's our million bucks? <laughs> you have your own tournament. You go, why do you get a million? But you know what? Oh, 50 likes lighter guys. Lima with the right hand on the exit. Head kick by Korshkov switches back to the southpaw stance. And the reason he's switching to that southpaw stance is Douglas Lima's right leg to get that kick is gonna take farther to travel. It's more opportunity for him to nullify that kick from that position, but he does open himself up to that body attack. And when it comes to 50 cents, it's all about getting that strap, and these two want to once again wear it. The Bellator MMA welterweight strap. It's currently around the waist of Rory McDonald, who is going to be challenging middleweight champion Gegard Mousasi in the main event. And there is the man with all the power. I like what I'm seeing from Douglas Lima because he's starting to read Korchkov. He's starting to look for those counters. He's starting to set up that timing. He can see it. Good Whipping inside, leg inside kick. low kick by Lima, midpoint of the second round. And when you see Korishkov moving off like that, Moral, that's telling you that leg kick, I felt it. I need to reestablish, I need to reset because I did feel it. So that shows that's being effective. Exchange of kicks, of course, against Rory McDonald in Lima's 
welterweight yes. title defense. Uh, Lima resembled Jose Aldo with that's your right favor, attacking the legs that, you know, it's a testament to Roy McDonald's will and his heart that he was able to survive and become welterweight champion. That title up for grabs in this tournament. Well, if you can look at that, look at the left leg of Korshkov. When he puts that thing oh. forward, you can see Douglas Lima going after it, and it's already starting to mark up, and it's already starting to swell. Lima just missed with the right uppercut, but then clipped Korshkov with a left hook. He's doing the same thing to Andre Korshkov's leg as he did to Rory McDonald's. There's already a hematoma on it, and that is going to affect Korshkov in this fight if it continues. It's that time of year when the leaves change color, and Korshkov's lead leg may be doing the same thing, courtesy of Douglas Lima. Douglas Lima's lower leg kicks are unbelievable. It's like getting hit with a Louisville slugger. Now the reason that Korishkov is pushing him into the fence, he needs to stop that kick. He needs to stop the damage. You can already see, look at the hematoma already on Korishkov's leg. I think this crowd's still buzzing in the afterglow of the uh, Pico KO that electrified the Shark Tank. Uh, less than a minute left here in the second round and a very Tactical battle between Korishkov and Lima. They find themselves against the fence, but not much in terms of any real dominance. No, there isn't. Korishkov is doing a good job when he gets his head inside and starts to push Lima's head away with his head, but he's not having the same ability of taking Lima down like he did before. It's obvious Lima knew that he's going to try to take me down. I'm going to start working on my takedown defense and it is actually having an effect on the fight. Hey, don't forget, back-to-back -back nights this October. It's the Heavyweight World Grand Prix. The finalists will be decided. All starts Friday, October 12th. Matt Mitrione battles light heavyweight champion Ryan Bader. Then Saturday, USA versus Russia. In the Bellator MMA cage, the American gangster Chil Sonnen takes on the Russian icon Fedor Emelianenko. It's all coming up. Bellator MMA Live, October 12th and 13th at 9 on the new Paramount Network. Well, take a look at these kicks. That leg kick right there is starting to do damage on Korichkov. That low leg kick, you're seeing it have an effect in the fight. There's a hematoma already building up on Korichkov's leg, and it is only going to get worse in this fight. When the kick goes to the inside of the leg, incredibly damaging and hard to move your leg off of that. Gentlemen, last round. Fight. Uh, no, that's not correct, Mr. Rosenthal. This is uh, round three of a scheduled five rounds. How do you have it after two on your unofficial scorecard, John? Right now, I'll tell you, that's the oh. first round that I've ever given Douglas Lima against Korishkov. Douglas Lima won that round 10-9. I, I think Josh Rosenthal did that same thing with Dan Henderson against Hua, uh, Shogun Hua, when they fought in this same building. Another. So, yeah, so there's a problem. Honest. <laughs> Very funny. So many indelible MMA memories here at the Shark Tank. Korshkov lands the left hand as it wasn't Lima the tripped. Exactly. It wasn't the left hand that, it, that hurt him. It was a trip of the feet. But now they're back in that same position. But Korshkov is not having the success he's had in the past with his takedowns. And really, Lima should not settle for this. No, he should not. He has got to start saying, you know, I need to make this guy work and separate. I need to start causing problems. Because all these little knees, if this is what happens in the fight, this is what the judges have to go off of, and they're going to give it to the guy who's trying to be offensive with those little knees when there's nothing coming from Douglas Lima at this point. Lima undefeated in Muay Thai competition, garnered 17 knockouts out of his 21 fights, so he's all about dynamic striking. We have not seen much of that here in this fight tonight. You know, all of this is very technical fighting, and it, it's draining on you as a fighter, but it's not exciting for the crowd. But there's so much technique and so many little things that both guys are doing right now, they're just negating what each other is doing. Well, let's talk about then what happens if this fight ends with a decision that fails to determine a winner. Let's just say there is a draw, technical draw, no contest, etc., Mr. McCarthy. <laughs> Well, since this is a tournament fight, but this is a five-round fight, yeah, under the unified rules, you are not going to be able to have the fighters go more than those five rounds. So what the commission will do is if the judges have scored this as a draw, the, the commission will go to those judges. Those judges will be told, I want you to pick a person to advance in the tournament. It doesn't mean that one guy wins. It's going to be a draw. 
but they will decide which one advances. Well, let's hope it doesn't come down to that as now, whoa! Korshkov shaving Lima's head with that spinning back fist attempt that Lima just avoided. Midpoint of round three inside low kick by Lima. Korshkov back to a southpaw stance, feints. Body kick by Lima, straight right hand between the guard by Lima. And the one thing I'd want to see out of Lima right now is start opening up with a couple more shots. Don't do singles, start to give a couple combinations off of this. Hide that kick behind the hands, make Korshkov's hands come up, and then hit that body. Wow, blistering body kick by Lima. Inside low kick by Lima. Now Lima beginning to find his rhythm. Yeah, this kicking game, I'm telling you right now, the way Douglas Lima kicks, he is absolutely devastating with those kicks. Korshkov is always going to try to close the distance if he can to stop those kicks. And Korshkov beginning to feel the effects of the kicks. Switching stances now back to orthodox. And right there, that's what Douglas Lima has to do. Do not put your back on the cage. Get yourself out by that black ring. Body kick by Korshkov, a better outside low kick by Lima. And again, it forces Korshkov to switch stances. And if, I, if the one thing, if I was in Douglas Lima's corner right now, I'm telling you, I want you to move forward. Pressure. Go forward slowly, but go forward. Lima stops the takedown attempt by Korshkov. Looking for Korshkov back now, looking for the front trumpet. Sprawling. Lima has 11 submission victories out of his 29. Very well. First, 13 knockout wins, 11 submission victories for Douglas Lima, and this is 37th professional fight. Korshkov needs to get that wrist control off. He's not gonna have a nice knee tap right there by Douglas Lima to get him back. Good job of Korshkov to get back to your feet, but this is where Douglas Lima wants to be. Put Korshkov's back towards the fence. You're gonna have a much better success rate than putting your back like it is right now, because now you're allowing Korshkov when he gets that charge, puts you right up into that cage with the clinch. Korshkov leads with the left hand of the body, wants to secure the takedown as the clock reaches the final 20 seconds of the third round. Are you surprised at all at the way this fight has played out, John, knowing I, what we knew coming in? I am not surprised because I knew it was going to be technical because both of them knew exactly what they had to do. We are headed to the penultimate round. It's been a long time since Silva and Jackson were in their prime. This man is in his prime. A man who became a star in strike force and is now the UFC light heavyweight and heavyweight champion. Always a pleasure to see DC Daniel Cormier in the house. Always Daniel Cormier. He cut his teeth in this house fighting for strike force. That is a great, great champion. That's your co-main event coming up right now. It's round four, and this is the opening round of the Bellator Welterweight Grand Prix. Former two-time champion Douglas Lima against former champ Andre Kordoshkov, and man, it's still anybody's fight. It is, and the, one of the things that I noticed in Douglas Lima going back to his corner after the end of the round, he is not breathing hard at all. He is in shape, and he should try to start pushing the pace of this fight. Korshkov has put a lot of energy in trying to get those takedowns. He has not been successful, and it is starting to show have an effect on him. Korshkov in the blue gloves, Alima in the red gloves. Oh, they're actually to the, the shin area there. Linear kick right down just below the knee. You a fan of that strong? I am a fan of it because you know what? It's a matter of it's pushing you back. You can deal with it. You just have to learn how to deal with it. And that's part of the martial arts. And there was a shot just below the equator. <laughs> and I'm sure that's going to, yeah, see? Bring about even more boos. Rowan, 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 Rowan. No coaching, no coaching. Take a second. Oh, yeah. Now that, and, and you look and you go, what the? Why? I, I, Why doesn't I he take points? Both fighters are in motion. Yeah, Douglas Lima was the, going for that outside kick, right? but Korishkov turned, and that put him in that space where he ends up having the gro groin strike. You, you got time. So whenever you're ready, make sure you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Korishkov sure will have up to five sure minutes ready. to recover. How, we got, how long we got? Okay. 
like Josh Rosen are going. How long do we have? Oh, you've got only almost five minutes left. <laughs> it just <laughs> happened. So if it happens again, I'm happy to okay? Just getting started here in this Bellator Welterweight Grand Prix. Good. As two sure. former champions set. hope to go. All right, let's emerge this. from the tournament right, as gentlemen. the Bellator welterweight champion. And what about the what? journey Rory McDonald's about to embark on in the main event, moving up to challenge Gegard Mousasi, and yet he already knows that he will be defending the welterweight championship, win or lose in the tournament, against John Fitch. You know, you look, what a bold move by Rory in taking that Fortune line. favors the bold. Fortune favors the bold. And then the one thing he knows is, no matter what happens to this fight, I have to get myself ready. I got John Fitch waiting in the wings in this welterweight tournament. Incredible. Korshkov lunging forward with that overhand left. Back to Orthodox, now to Southpaw. So Horskov just doing his best to try to befuddle wow. Lima, looking for the takedown. Really Beautifully nice. defended by Lima. Exactly. You look, he, he got deep on him. Good level change, got deep on that takedown, and Lima just bounced him off like he was a block wall. Horskov is having no success in the takedowns of Douglas Lima. But right here, this is where I say Douglas Lima start, needs to start opening up. Don't sit here and start to accept this clinch position and do these little things. Make oh. Korshkov work. Get in the open. King of the streets. Inside a knee delivered by Lima. Talk about the pace, John, and because obviously these two champions have, have been in there a long time with each other, and, and obviously they know each other, and they know what's at stake. And yet, what, what do you want to see them do to make this a more dynamic fight? Well, what we're seeing is exactly what I expected out of Andre Korshkov. I expected Korshkov to go after this takedown because he knows he needs to put Douglas Lima down on the ground. That way it takes away all the kicks, and it limits the damage that he accepts but he hasn't been successful in this fight when he has been successful in the past. He's doing what he has been trained to do. Douglas Lima needs to start opening up when he gets Korshkov around. Start to break off, open up with an elbow, frame out, and then open up with your striking attack in the middle of the cage. Final 90 seconds of the fourth round, scheduled for five. And this is the opening round of the Bellator MMA Welterweight Grand Prix. Winner to face the victor of Paul Daly versus Michael Venom Page, a much anticipated grudge match. And this is one of those fights where when, when the fighter goes, oh, I won that fight. It's like, no, I don't care who wins it. You're not opening up and doing things that are telling the judge, I deserve to win this fight. We are down to the final minute of the fourth round. And Lima, nice the That's with what the I'm talking strike. about. Hit with that strike, circle out, open up from the outside. Lima ducks under the left hand from Korshkov and then misses with the right uppercut. Every time you see Korshkov start to bounce, it's a timing rhythm that Lima is good at picking up and hitting with the leg kick. Oh, nice knee by Lima. Final 30 seconds of the fourth round, and Korshkov and Lima still trying to solve each other's puzzle. Both recording wins against the other. They exchanged the Bellator Welterweight Championship. And we are coming down. Oh, right hand that stunned Korshkov momentarily by Lima. And Lima now attacking Korshkov in the final seconds of the fourth. The bell in the fifth and a final round in this battle of former Bellator welterweight champions to kick off the Bellator MMA welterweight Grand Prix. According to Big John's unofficial scorecard, Lima is ahead by two points, which would indicate that Korshkov would need a finish in order to advance to the semifinals.
Horshkov was very impressed by Lima's performance against Rory McDonald. And he told us that he wasn't going to rush in and try to finish him right away because that's how well he was able to catch him the last time. But now is the time. Four minutes, 20 seconds left. Someone needs to impose their will and skill on the other, John. Well, there comes a point where your corner should be at least having an idea of, ah, that's a close round, or ah, we lost that round. And in this situation, they should be telling Korshkov, you need to open up, you need to go after it. Lima told us the trilogy fights, of course, are special. He, they've spent a lot of time in the cage together. He can't wait to finish this chapter off. He's come in ready. Says it's time to perform, and now is the time. And now that you see Korshkov going backwards, he is telling you all of that energy, all of that damage is starting to take effect. Douglas Lima moving forward is a bad thing for Andre Korshkov. Left hook, right uppercut, right hand, left hook by Lima. No question, Lima is getting the better of the two fighters in the striking exchange, but their the exchanges and even the delivery, few and far between, John. Absolutely. You, know, you look at everyone knows Korshkov as an elite striker, but in every one of their fights in the striking department, Douglas Lima has been the guy that's gotten the better of the exchanges. One, two combination scores for Lima. Korshkov on his back foot, out of the southpaw stance, now back towards the docks. Lima feints with the leg kick. Left hook just raised. Korshkov with the right hand landed. Well, we got a real problem with our movement ability of Korshkov. His legs are getting heavy and he's having a hard time moving, which is setting him up so for, what? The, for that attack. So win or lose, we won't be seeing any ballroom dancing. From Korshkov, and you know, you know what? It, it, there's got to be something about ballroom dancing. Korshkov is one hell of a striker. You got a guy like uh, Vasily. Lima now attacking Korshkov on the ground, getting his back, dropping those right hands. Two minutes, 22 seconds left in the fight. Lima wanting to finish it here in the fifth. Lima utilizing a really good hip ride on top of Korshkov's hip, being heavy and just picking away with the strikes. Lima gets the hooks in. Now looking oh, for the mid, and choke on Korshkov. He's in trouble. He's in trouble, bro. Korshkov has never been submitted. He's pulling on the wrong arm. He's going to go out. He's out. He's he out. Is He's out. out. Not only in the fight, but on the tournament, Douglas Lima, in dramatic fashion, scores his 12th submission victory, and he advances to the semifinals of the Bellator MMA Welterweight Grand Prix. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Take a look, he's on this hip ride. You see him starting to open up with strikes. Korshkov starts to move, and immediately, watch the position that Douglas Lima comes into. That hook inside gets it set, brings his arm underneath, which makes it hard for Korshkov to defend. That choke is in tight. It's only a matter of time from that point. He's either going to tap or nap, and he goes to sleep. Look at that leg come in for that hook. Outside hook comes in, and you see that arm come over the top, and it's tight against his head. There's nothing for him to pull. He's trying to pull it down, but he doesn't get high enough. Get that little bit of squeeze right here. The twist on the neck. He's going to go out. And this trilogy, the rubber match, proving to be a bedtime story for Andre Korshkov as he gets put to sleep by Douglas Lima. Douglas Lima picking up his 30th career victory, his 12th victory in Bellator. And now Lima's eighth stoppage victory is well, the most in Bellator welterweight division history. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, with the rear naked choke in time, it comes to an end officially. Three minutes, four seconds into the fifth and final round. The winner by submission, and now advancing in the $1 million welterweight world Grand Prix. Douglas, the Phenom, Lima. Lima bounces back from losing the welterweight championship to Rory McDonald in his last fight and now advances to the semifinals of the welterweight Grand Prix. He will talk to Big John McCarthy.
Congratulations, Douglas Lima. That was an absolute clinic on how to slowly break down a fighter. You can't just go out there and try to put away a guy like Andre Korshkov. You took your time. The leg kicks, what did the leg kicks do for you in this fight? Just before anything, I want to thank God for this victory, for bringing me here healthy. <laughs> I'm so thankful. Thank you, Lord. It's like, man, Korshkov is a tough guy. He's a dangerous guy. I'm sorry if it wasn't as exciting, you know, as I thought it would be. But, man, you can't blink against a guy like that. You know, the leg kicks were slowing him down. He switched left-handed. That kind of threw me off a little bit, but I was prepared for it. And, uh, man, we got it done. I was breaking him. You know, I saw that he was hurt. He was slowing down a little bit. And I was able to capitalize. That's exactly what we were saying when we were watching the fight. We are saying you were slowly breaking him down. You could see that those leg kicks were having a huge effect. And in this last round, he had to open up if he was going to beat you. And you got that opportunity when you sunk in that rear naked choke. Did you know, oh, it's tight, I got him. Yeah, I knew it. And, uh, man, you know, that's the type of guy that he is. He'd rather go to sleep than tap. All my respect is for him. Man, the guy's been here with Bellator forever, just like myself. So, man, it was an honor for me to compete against him one more time. Well, I will tell you, congratulations on being the first person to advance in the Bellator welterweight tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Doug Lima.